Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancy. And I'm Jackie Toledo, State Representative for District 60. Whether you're already an entrepreneur, or looking to start your journey tomorrow, or are just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. Each week, I will interview a different entrepreneur from across the globe. I will continue to offer episodes in all industries to provide you with many different perspectives. You never know which motivational journey will inspire you most. Each guest will take you through their story and help you learn from their successes and lessons learned. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate the show five stars and continue listening by subscribing. My guest on the show today is someone I met when I traveled to the Florida State Capitol with Tampa General Hospital last year. It was my honor to share my story with her and we reconnected when she returned back to Tampa. Today's guest is truly passionate about what she does for a living and I think that will lead to many valuable lessons for you all listening on. She works tirelessly for the people of Hillsborough County, Florida, advocating for common sense solutions for our community. I am grateful to be in her district and I am very grateful for her leading the way to banning texting while driving here in Tampa. She is an amazing leader and an even better person who has built her own brand, and she is here to talk about that today. I'm very much looking forward to learning more of your story, so allow me to please introduce Florida District 60 State Representative and last year's Florida Police Chiefs Association Legislator of the Year, Jackie Toledo. Jackie, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me on the show, and, and like you said, some stories inspire different people, and just hit home to certain people. Your story, when I heard it, I was inspired and I thought, wow, you know, what endurance that you had. And I'm sure that many people have been inspired by your story and we all have our different struggles in life. So I'm happy to be here uh, to join you today to talk about my story and, you know, how I got here. I'm excited to learn all about it. So would you mind taking this time to please introducing yourself to our listeners a little more and previewing your story without giving away too much of that entrepreneurial journey. Absolutely, so I was born in Peru. Uh, I came to the US when I was five years old, uh, moved to California, and then basically my parents got divorced, moved to Florida, and um, went to college at University of South Florida, go Bulls, got my civil engineering degree, um, you know, and began my journey as an engineer you know, uh, working for others. So I'll give you that kind of background uh, a little bit. And then after working as an engineer for a few years, started having babies. Uh, I had five children. So, um, and now they're, you know, getting bigger, 9, 11, 13, 15, and 22. I can't believe it. So, but during that time, of course, there had been many different changes in my life focused on my kids and my family, you know, raising them while they were babies, but then wanted to go back into the workforce. Um, so did a lot of engineering stuff, you know, when they were a little, when they started school, but then the economy tanked as in 2008, 2009, and, you know, engineering tends to lag behind a little bit because you always need engineers, but it was, it slowed down tremendously. So at that time, I started a business um, in 2010 in something that I had no idea uh, about. It was a performing art camp. So um, this I'm not a performer. I don't know how to sing, act, dance, but I'm very passionate about the arts. I love the arts and appreciate them. And I love kids. So I started a studio for um, a summer camp for kids called Tampa Creative Camps. Um, during that time where people had the need for summer camps, consistent um, care for their children during summer school, I mean, summer, um, during the summers. And I, it was hard for me to find as a parent. Um, so I decided to offer that to our, uh, our community. And it was um, during that time that I learned to be an entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, since then have been an entrepreneur in my engineering job. But when I started that job, I learned because not only did I have to learn the business, um, I also had to learn marketing, accounts receivables, all those things that go in 
to building a business from scratch. So, you know, I was a little afraid of that, but at the same time, you know, ready for the challenge because I knew I had that passion and drive to um, offer those services to our community. Thank you for sharing all that, Jackie. I did not know all of that, so I'm excited to see where this episode's gonna go. It's time for the big five. On each episode, my guest and I will go over these five questions to help you, the listeners, learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Are you ready to go? Yes, absolutely. So when did you realize that you either weren't happy with what you were doing or you just needed some kind of change to truly start this entrepreneurial journey? Please share those moments for us. So I mentioned that I was an engineer and I was working for a firm, um, you know, and putting in hours here and there, um, but that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to build something for myself, for my family that gave me that flexibility to spend time with them, yet do something I was passionate about. Um, so when I started my own business, um, of course, I was learning, which I'm that type of person that loves to learn new things. And, and um, I don't believe there's anything as failure. You just, there are just lessons. So it was that time during um, the economic recession that we had that I discovered we, I just need to go out on my own and, um, and then I can have that flexibility in my life that I need. That recession was my freshman year of college, senior year of high school. So going through my mind was, I don't know how long this is going to last. That's what made me pick finance as a major. I thought it would hold a decent probability of me getting a job, at least through all this adversity, similar to an engineering degree. Absolutely. And, you know, through adversity is when you find, um, you know, opportunities. I couldn't agree more. But now that you've been on this entrepreneurial path for all of these years, what are one or two of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur for you? I think just staying the course. Sometimes you can't see three months out, six months out, a year out, but just staying focused on your goals and what you want to accomplish. Um, I think that's the hardest part um, because sometimes you get discouraged, but you have to keep at it and you have to give it a chance. So, um, and knowing when to reinvest in your own, in your business. I think that's a judgment you have to make. And sometimes, you know, you want to spend the money that you've earned, but I think in reinvesting it back into your business is the best way to go. With that, there's a lot of lessons learned. But looking back, Jackie, what is one of your greatest failures or lessons learned? And what did it teach you? Why is it still stuck with you all the way up until today? I think one of the biggest lessons learned is be careful who you surround yourself with, especially partners. Um, it's better to be with like-minded people because sometimes you may be um, someone that likes to take risk. If the person that you're, w you're partnered with doesn't like to take risks, then you're probably going to have a lot of fights and arguments. Now, I also think there's good, it's good to have a balance, but eventually, you know, if you are totally opposites, then you're going to have problems um, with your business um, and with your growth. So, I, I think that that's one of the biggest lessons is be careful who you partner with and, and work with. But, and I, like I mentioned earlier, I don't think there's anything um, like a failure. You just, it's just another lesson. So if you give up, then you fail, but it's when you keep going and learning and move forward that you are not failing. That's a great mindset. Is there any advice you can give to our listeners here who may be in a similar situation where their partnership, they don't think it's a good idea? What are some ways that you've kind of changed your thinking of before you get into a new arrangement? What are some things you look out for? Risk and communication style. You know, like whether that. someone likes to email or talk or, you know, because some people, you know, they communicate by telephone calls, but they don't remember that follow up of, hey, just want to, uh, you know, summarize our conversation. This is what I got from our conversation. Be very clear. Be very upfront with your, your ex expectations. I think managing expectations is the, the best, the key to success, actually, whether it's with any relationship, 
or any business is managing expectations to your customers, to your partners, to anyone, and be clear with what you expect. I couldn't agree with you more there, Jackie. Being transparent about your expectations, open communication, those are all things for a healthy relationship. I'm very optimistic and positive. So sometimes when I'm communicating with somebody, if they give me an ounce of optimism, like, you, oh, yeah, we may be able to do that. To me, I take that it's, it's going to ha happen. So going back to communication, if I don't go back and follow up with that person and say, okay, this is what I got out of our conversation, then, you know, then I may have disappointed them because they told me, no, I said may, not it will happen. So now you're taking it as you, I gave you my word. So just being very clear on that communication because that can happen to anybody. And it's been parts of, uh, I guess, the struggles in my life is the miscommunication with people. I love all the lessons that you've provided through communication and sharing your expectations. One of the most frustrating parts of my work career so far has been for the production of what was supposed to be my first children's book. Expectations were on the table each time, but communication was never both ways. I had my meetings canceled the morning of multiple times, and it was just excuse after excuse. So that relationship obviously didn't work out. But Jackie, if you had to pick any entrepreneur, dead or alive, to have a meeting with, sit down and learn from, who would it be? I'm excited to hear your answer because I know you are as well a lover of learning. It's interesting. I pick um, Madame Bollinger um, and I love champagne. I'm a big champagne girl. Um, but, you know, Bollinger was an amazing story of a woman who was at a time the only woman that was um, in the champagne industry. And she was very successful. She used her story to kind of market herself and um, create a product that is timeless, I think. So I would just love to hear from her how she did it, how she kept going, how she, you know, uh, differentiated herself from others and from other the, the other champagne houses in France um, and became so successful for so long. So let's look a little deeper here. If you could even pick where this meeting would be, where would you pick? Uh, definitely in France and in, in the middle of the winery. Just love it. <laughs> that would be amazing. So I love the tips you've been sharing throughout the episode, Jackie. Let's stop and see what we're working on right now for you and also look in the future. What are we seeing from Jackie Toledo right now and also a year and five years out? Well, that's hard to tell because I'm in politics. So <laughs> you never know. It changes uh, almost daily now. But um, you're just, I, just always being prepared to take the step that God leads me in um, and also, you know, the community needs. So whether it's continuing on the path that I'm in or going to another um, position or just stepping back and taking what I've learned to make our community better, I think um, – it's just unknown right now, but as far as business goes, um, you know, I, I hope to be independent and my, my business self-sustaining while I'm able to do um, my political career as well. Right now, while we're on the political career, let's give a little more information for everybody listening on, especially our Tampa listeners. When is the election? What are some things we're passionate about with you? So I was elected in 2016, four years ago, and, um, you know, I have an election every two years uh, for state representative, and my general election is on November 3rd. So I'm passionate, as you know, about public safety and was yep. successful in the banning texting and driving and making it primary offense. Um, but I would like to see our state go hands-free. I think that making it clear that, you know, being distracted is unacceptable. So focusing on driving um, is, is what we should be doing when we're in, in a car. So that is one of the biggest passions that I have. But I'm also concerned about our healthcare system and, you know, the cost of healthcare continues to rise. And I've been working on 
trying to reform the prescription drug cost to lower those costs by, you know, reforming the PBMs, which are pharmacy benefit managers. They're middleman in the prescription drug world, and they're they're contributing to the cost of prescription drugs. So I want to see some changes there to help save money, to keep people healthy, and to keep um, our health care affordable. Thank you for sharing all that, Jackie. I'm certainly excited to see all that your future holds. And now it is time for the Spotlight Story. On each episode, I share an entrepreneurial journey to inspire our listeners, and I would love your take on it. For today's episode, I will introduce the entrepreneurial path of Gabrielle Coco Chanel, the founder of Chanel. She was born in 1883 and raised at an orphanage in France. When she was 12 years old, her mother died and her father abandoned her. She was sent to an ubazine in central France. The nuns from the orphanage taught her how to sew and she later used her skills as a seamstress to change her life. She opened up her first shop at 21 years old in Paris and soon became the first female to introduce casual wear to women's fashion. This innovative entrepreneur used men's fabric to popularize comfortable sportswear, simple dresses, and women's pants. Her designs in Paris heavily influenced the fashion industry, and Chanel changed the face of women's fashion forever. Present day, right now, the current owners of Chanel are worth around $19 billion, and Chanel continues to be a symbol of total luxury. Jackie, what do you like best about this story? Well, I am a huge a fan of Coco Chanel, so um, I love every part of the story. I, I feel like she took her situation and instead of you know being victimized by it she took it she developed a skill set she got that skill set and um became an icon i mean i'm a as a fashionista i admire her i look up to her and i'm so impressed by you know the empire that she has built that has been again timeless too um when you know you look at chanel's whether her purses or clothes it's very symbolic and and has a texture and feel to it and look to it that everyone can identify. So I, I, I love that she took the skill set and I think everyone should be able to either find something that they're skilled in or passionate about and just run with it and do what she has done. I couldn't agree more, but Jackie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I know our listeners are going to see all the value in the episode. I loved how you did just that. You found something you loved and you ran with it. I loved your, how you're doing everything. As a mother of five, the difficult parts of an entrepreneur are going to relate to everybody listening on, but it is time for the last word. And I also do this on my other podcast series, A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancey, because I want my listeners to really get to know the guests I bring on. Is there something that you would like to share with everybody listening that we did not get to touch on yet today? Yes, I just want to say that there's never a good time to make a change. I mean, some people are afraid of change. Some people are afraid to leave their job, to start a business, to run for office. It's just never a good time. You just need to go and do it and learn the lesson from trying. At the very minimum, it's going to you know, better your development. It's going to make you a better person because you're going to be able to identify those challenges and, um, and become stronger. So if you are thinking about going out on your own, especially during this time where there's uncertainty, do it, invent something, you know, market something, be passionate about it. You never know what you're going to achieve if you don't try it. I couldn't agree more. That's one of my favorite parts of entrepreneurship. Everything I'm doing, I'm really just learning tweaking it a little bit, making it better and doing it again and again until it actually works out. But would you mind please sharing your professional social media, the website, ways for our listeners to follow your endeavors, get ready to vote for you come November? Absolutely. It's at Toledo for Tampa on Twitter, on Facebook, on um, Instagram, and then um, JackieToledo.com. Be sure to check out all her handles and head to JackieToledo.com. If you're in Tampa, don't forget to vote for Jackie. And it is social media time for the show, and we're on whichever platform you like to use. We're at what it's really like to be an entrepreneur on LinkedIn, at your favorite morning podcast on Instagram and Facebook, and we're at Podcast by Lancey on Twitter, so you get updates from this show and a mental health break with Vincent A. Lancey. 
Of course, my handles are at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube, and my website is vincentalancy.com. If you check out my books, DM me. I'd love to hear from you. We have Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, and How to Transform Your Mindset When the Norm is Changed, both on Amazon now. As always, I will end the show with a quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. This one is from Gabrielle Coco Chanel, the entrepreneur from today's Spotlight Story. She said, quote, don't spend time beating on a wall, hoping to transform it into a door. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Great. Everybody be sure to check out her social media. Those are easy handles to follow and JackieToledo.com. And it is social media for the show and we're on whichever platform you like to use. We're at what it's really like to be an entrepreneur on LinkedIn, at your favorite morning podcast on Instagram and Facebook and podcast by Lancey on Twitter. So you get updates from this show and the mental health break with Vincent A. Lancey. Of course, my handles are at Vincent A. Lancey for all social media and YouTube. And my website is VincentALancey.com. If you check out my books, DM me. I would love to hear from you. We have Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, and How to Transform Your Mindset When the Norm is Changed. Both are on Amazon now. As always, I will end the show with a quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. This one is from Gabrielle Coco Chanel, the entrepreneur from today's spotlight story I ended the show with. She said, don't spend time beating on a wall, hoping to transform it into a door. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. That was awesome, Jackie. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello? I think I may have lost you. Can you hear me?